You're enjoying leveling in the War Within right now because you're still going to be leveling for the next couple of weeks until Season 1 starts for Mythic Plus. But what you can also do is watch this video and see a prediction of what the meta could look like for melee DPS in Season 1 of the War Within with a lot of probably bias. So let's kick it off with Arms Warrior. And as always with this tier list, everything is a prediction of course we try to base our predictions on as much clear data that we can but considering that this beta cycle has been the heaviest beta cycle in terms of class tuning and reworks it is anybody's guess what's gonna land in the next couple of weeks but we're gonna do our best and try to make an accurate prediction and we're gonna put arms into shit i mean d tier oh my god d for dick because oh this is not it chief now the damage of arms is not that bad it's a little bit there and in terms of overall performance it's rising a little bit higher with more and more tuning and changes to the hero talents but it's kind of similar if you've watched our range dps tier list with balanced druid where i don't feel like people want to play arms i don't know what's going on with the design but it doesn't really feel like arms is what you want to play in terms of a warrior dps pick and we're gonna get to that later in the video <laughs> but it also doesn't really bring any unique utility to mythic plus and that is a warrior curse since warriors in general are pretty bad at being helpful for their group at the very least what warriors could do is actually bring killer damage or in this case maybe killer execute and maybe arms will eventually have good execute that's worth it but even with all of that even now in dragonfly or let's say in season three season four uh, we've had arms be probably one one of its best state in terms of meta in terms of dragonfly with giga damage and it still wasn't cut to make it all the way into like s tier level so it's gonna need a lot of love and probably a big rework to actually feel like you would want an arms or a warrior period in your mythic plus meta composition because the composition is basically composed of a lot of little unique little tools like how we are composed by our second channel that we can actually use to put clips and discussions about different wow topics that if we had to put them on the big main channel that you're looking at right now it would probably tank the algorithm for some weird youtube reason but enough about that you can actually check youtube.com slash at marcellian flame which is our second channel and see a lot of the snippets from our wow wrap-up show that we have at live every thursday where Marcelian and I actually discuss class tuning, balance, meta, more subjects to come with the World Within expansion, but also topics freely discussed with you live that we normally cannot make a video on on the main channel. So if you want to see more uncensored, unfiltered Marcelian online, check our second channel, link down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to. I mean, it's a small channel. It helps. Every little bit helps and we love you for it. And almost as love we... <laughs> almost as much as we love assassination okay guys listen we we love you a lot okay but we love assassination a little bit more because for the first time ever oh my god assassination is wait no that's wrong it's going into s here listen i'm gonna be honest right here assassination stole my heart with a knife and it's kind of hiding it in a box somewhere i don't know how much this prediction is going to last because historically rogue has been one of the worst classes to predict in terms of indi individual specs for meta before Dragonflight, I believe sub looked the best and then it was just nerfed before season one and again before season three, similar to assassination. It looked really well by the end of the testing cycle and just like a day or a week before it got nerfed into the ground and it completely tanked. As it stands right now, it's one of the best DPSers in the game period, which is always really good. And Rogue is one of those classes that you really want in Mythic Plus. It's un unique utility and crowd control is great. It's not the best, but it's good enough where you will feel like it's worth it. Plus the fact that Rogue is a super tanky class period is also a really good thing. Part of the reason why Assassination is also a desired spec in theory, because it has always had this thing, but it's never had enough damage. But in theory, Assassination is for, you kind of want it for the same reason you would want fire mage where you actually have funnel damage when doing aoe some other specs have but essentially is one of the better ones in terms of its overall design because once you dot everything up you can essentially just nuke one target and you might have to with death stalker as the hero talent and just see it splash damage with caustic spatter all around and we are no strangers to a big influx of lieutenant type bobs present in the mythic plus 
pool season thing that we have this time around and you will want specs with good funnel damage to clear those lieutenants up we don't have the bolstering affix anymore where that would be even better during bolstering weeks but it's still going to be fairly valuable and the fact that it does a lot of damage and is a rogue is probably going to make it into asia i mean we predict and we kind of hope because i don't think sustenation has ever been meta that i can remember in mythic plus <laughs> period which is a star contrast to the situation of outlaw right now that might actually change and this is a good time to talk about a lot of the disclaimers for this type of video things can of course change this is a prediction based on logs that we've analyzed that you might be seeing on here on screen and even these logs are kind of hard to judge because the key levels are different for each specs because we couldn't really find a consistent key level done across all specs because the keys are very hard to do not everybody's doing the keys and not everybody's doing with all of the specs and your eye level on beta scales with the key level so you will never see the same amount of overall damage at all key levels because it's not the same gear with that being said nobody's playing outlaw dude i've looked through hundreds of logs most likely i couldn't find an outlaw log i don't know where they are if they're hidden maybe this is a secret special project of s tier material where outlaw is going to be in an mdi and we just predicted it wrong and it would be so hilarious but as it stands, the damage is very poor, the design is a little bit eh, and it definitely feels like it's the probably loser of the rogue class at the moment. Of course, that couldn't change, but until that changes, we kind of predict it's going to be tier. Let's say, okay, let's do the thing. Let's do the thing where right now it's D tier, but I predict it's not going to be that bad. So I predict it's going to be at most into B tier because Outlaw has been consistently across the years a fairly good Mythic Plus spec since it had very few constraints in dealing its thing. The AOE damage is basically your single target damage, so I'll was just good across the board not to mention it is the tankiest rogue spec considering the restless blades unless this change changes uh, reduces the cooldown of your defensives and is the only rogue that does that so you have your defensives way more often than normal then that helps when you're going into keys where you will die a lot and this was a problem and a, an asset in dragonfly with everybody just dying all the time and surviving was the main factor in pushing keys now i don't know if it's necessarily the same it definitely feels like as we were testing these beta keys out that damage intake is definitely a problem since people are not able to push high keys on beta whatsoever i don't know how it's going to be once the season launches but uh, not looking good chief uh, so that's as much as the advantages of an outlaw will carry it. Similar to that, survival is in a weird spot. It's doing a lot of damage, but it's not kind of drawing any eyes or any attention whatsoever. It's a good hunter spec. It's in the process of a kind of like a messy rework where there's some conflicting ideologies when it comes to survival where I don't know if the, the devs want stuff like tip of the spear and flanking strike and mongoose bite to be one way and the players want it in another way so the devs kind of caved and let the players have their way but it still feels like survival is just one of those specs that has an influx of resources and procs and buffs that you have to maintain it's never clear which one you have to do and it's kind of very hard to balance such a spec because you never know how to balance if there's not a clear priority like okay most important thing is maintaining tip of the spear second most important thing is to consuming focus when you have a spec that just feels like a little bit all over the place or at least it's so difficult that it's very counterintuitive to play it's probably very hard to balance as to why probably we have seen close to no recent changes to survival in the last couple of weeks i'm really hoping that it's going to be a better spec because it is after rework it's just a much superior spec but i feel like it's going to lose out to marksmanship in terms of what hunter spec you would want and i think we've last week ranked marksmanship into a tier so b tier is probably where survival is going to be at enhancement is one of our first a tier specs now similar to our range tier list i do have to kind of mention that we've decided that s and a tier are you know tiers where specs just do the most amount of damage in the game so in this sense enhancement kind of competes with assassination maybe sometimes even over overcomes assassination in terms of the overall damage it does now with that being said it is a shaman spec and usually not the shaman spec you would want in a meta composition that usually falls down to restoration because everything that <laughs> enhancement brings restoration brings and it also brings a lot more defensives and really reliable healing and healing cooldowns that's stuff that you would really want in a mythic plus team composition so enhancement is not special as a shaman spec whatsoever if anything that speciality might go a little bit further to elemental since it's a range spec although 
my personal prediction is that melee is going to be the dominant meta in season one and it's likely going to be wrong so which is why i'm probably keeping enhancement in a tier but it might just as well be s tier in terms of overall performance however i still feel it's one of the squishier specs in the game and totemic is still a little bit weird i don't know where that's gonna land in terms of you know design tuning and all of that stuff i don't know if it's gonna overtake stormbringer but as it stands a tier is what it is Feral is weird because, first of all, if you're looking at some of the uh, overall displays that we have in this video, we don't have them for all specs because we just couldn't find, for instance, we couldn't find Outlaw whatsoever. Maybe there are some old three months lock where somebody accidentally uh, did a key in Outlaw spec and then went out and swapped back to Assassination. But uh, similar to Feral, um, outside of Maystein, who's a god at Feral, and you might see some of the logs right now showing some crazy overall for Feral, Feral doesn't really shine most. It definitely shines better than Balanced Druid because it just has better damage overall. And with the Rampant Ferocity being the way to delay away damage since Terrapin Wounds has been taken away, you will have decent amount of funnel and priority single target damage as well. And that's really good for Mythic Plus. And you will be bringing the Druid goody things. But once again, the Druid, druid the goody things, as in the Battle Res, the Mark of the Wild, is anybody's game if Resto is going to be a meta spec or not? Because if Resto Druid is going to be the ideal healer of choice, you're likely not going to see any other Druid spec in the high S tier level specs. But outside of that, the damage is really good, rivaling almost those of the A tier. And the Druid things are also really good. I still predict it is going to be in B tier. I don't think it's going to be any higher. It would be a big surprise if it is. Frost Death Knights. Um, okay, well, I think pretty much everybody expects it to be S tier, and uh, we've debated a little bit as to which Death Knight spec will be the better Death Knight spec at the moment. We're leaning more heavily towards Frost, because Frost is, for lack of a better word, easier to play than Unholy, and once again, it doesn't rely a lot on specific tank pools and number of packs, although obviously the more the better, and whenever they align with Frostworm's Fury if you're playing Rider of the Apocalypse or your Death's Mark if you're playing Deathbringer, um, that's going to be better, of course, sure. But outside of that, it's not as restrictive in doing its damage as Unholy would be. And the damage is gnarly, dude. Even after the nerfs, it's still one of the better DPS specs in the game. It's top, top. Like, you see it all, almost always sub the meters, but sometimes it's losing to like one spec or the other, but not consistently, so it's a very good spec. Not to mention Death Knight is gonna be a very tanky spec, period, tanky class in general. You're gonna bring Battle Res, which is a good source to bring Battle Res from, since Death Knights do it a little bit better than most other specs in the game. You have Grips, which are gonna be really good. Now, of course, once again, Frost is S tier with the assumption that maybe Blood Decay is not S tier, although a lot of people like to play Blood Decay. Predicting Blood Decay's meta is gonna be a little bit relative since Blood Decay always has a problem of being one shot at a point in time where other tanks don't get one shot. So right now, since I don't think Blood Decay is going to be the ideal tank, likely Frost Decay is the first Death Knight that you will want in your group. Moving on to Fury Warrior, Fury has been blasting and after the bug, well, at least a lot of the bug fixes for Slayer, it's actually destroying the meters and it is doing what a warrior probably should be doing in Mythic Plus and that is just bringing raw damage. Now, it's once again not S tier level and I don't think Warrior is ever going to be an S tier class in terms of Mythic Plus, maybe protection might be because it doesn't really bring a lot of cool stuff for mythic plus the cool stuff that warrior usually brings that people can exploit from a warrior usually come on protection when you have spell reflect type mechanics that you can do to completely immune certain tank bosses that would just topple over other tanks obviously this is fury fury is not a tank so you're not gonna have a lot of usage for spell reflect outside of the occasional reflect unless you taunt a boss or taunt a dangerous add and reflect the tank mechanic that may happen, but that, that is so sketchy, and I don't think it's big enough to warrant Fury Warrior being into S tier, even though it is probably one of the best melee specs in the game currently. Havoc Demon Hunter is hard to predict. Uh, Demon Hunter in general is all over the place in terms of his tuning right now. Right now, it's kind of around C tier-ish. The damage is not terrible. It's actually doing better and better as the weeks progress. 
but I am not completely convinced that Demon Hunter will be the source of the damage that you want to bring. Now, now that's with saying that Vengeance is still a decent amount of attack. Like, you could probably have, let's say, I'll all be charitable and maybe move Havoc all the way into B tier, although it could be higher if we see a resurgence of Caster Meta. That might still happen. And if we have Caster Meta, you'll want a Demon Hunter, most likely, maybe. That usually was brought up by Vengeance um, in the past couple of seasons of Dragonfly, since it was a good source of Chaos Brand. Since if you put it on Havoc, unless Havoc is also destroying the meters, you're going to lose a lot of damage. And the damage that Chaos Brand brings might not be as great anymore if the goal is damage. And that probably is if you're talking about Chaos Brand. Outside of that, the Hero Talents don't really elevate Havoc into a place where you would see it as a contender for a meta spec in any way. It just does damage, which obviously is, that's great. But it feels like it's a notch behind A tier specs at the moment, which once again, it can, of course, change. Red Paladin is uh, one of the solid specs. It's going to go into A tier. I still don't think it's going to be a meta spec all the way into S tier, but it has some of the highest damage. Maybe it has lower damage. It probably has lower damage than Enhancement and maybe even Fury, but it is tankier. It has better utility than both of these two specs. Obviously, it has a new humidity. <laughs> Immunity. <laughs> Immunity, which definitely really helps in some of the dungeon mechanics that we've had so far. And bringing Blessing of Protection is also really good that you can, you know, immune a lot of the fixates that we have, a lot of the mandatory damage that we get. That's going to be really good. And considering that you're just a very solid spec across the board, both in single target and in AoE, uh, I see red as a very, very solid A tier. Subtlety Rogue is once again very similar to Outlaw, a, a spec that's very hardly played in the beta right now. People have been, I guess, simming, theory crafting, and saying that Subtlety is one of the best Rogue specs in terms of its overall damage, and that's great. We couldn't really see it for ourselves, so I don't know exactly where to where to put it. I'll probably put it. I kind of want to put it into D tier for Dog, but maybe I'm not giving Rogue the credit that it's due, and maybe it's still going to be a decent Rogue spec. Now, as long as Assassination is going to be where it is, and as long as Outlaw is going to feel a slight resurgence in its overall throughput, I don't see a lot of love being thrown into Subtlety's way, since one of the issues that Subtlety has had in the last couple of seasons of Dragonflight is the way it's doing AoE damage, and it doesn't feel like that has changed very much, although with uh, uh, the Trickster Flurry Talent, I believe, where you just cleave your single target rotation into AoE, that might change. So Subtlety is one of the specs where I'm almost 90% sure I'm wrong, but I'm, I have to make one choice or the other. So it's going to be into C tier, but it might end up being an A tier spec in the end. So we'll see how this evolves. Unholy, speaking of A tier specs, is going to be into A tier. For the longest time, people predicted Unholy to probably be meta, but it has been nerfed a lot. Its damage is close to Frost Death Knights, and it actually probably scales way better than Frost Death Knights in big AoE. However, with the current design and tuning of Mythic Plus, it doesn't feel like Unholy is going to get the chance to actually dish out that damage, since it is very, very difficult to pull large packs, period. And if it at any point in time, pulling large packs becomes the thing, and it probably might be an MDI, but this is, you know, the meta for the game, uh, we could probably see Unholy take the spot of uh, Frost Death Knight, since it might just scale way better in large AoE fights. Until then, it's still a very solid A tier spec. It's a very good Death Knight spec to have in general, and it does have a lot of damage. We'll see how things evolve. Last but not least, Wind Walker. Okay, well, I'll probably have to put it around C tier right now. It's in the process of getting buffed more and more. And I have a strong suspicion that the best monk spec is going to be Brewmaster. And the second monk spec, second best monk spec is probably going to be Mistweaver at this point with the buffs that it gets and the throughput that it has access to, which is really great. I mean, Windwalker is just great. The damage is good, but it has to be explosive to outshine the other two monk specs to become a, a full-fledged meta spec. And if Brewmaster ends up becoming the tank that you would want in your high key pushes, it's likely that's going to bump Windwalker way down, even though maybe it might be a B tier spec, maybe it might even be an A tier once it's been buffed way more than it is right now. 
But until then, I don't suspect we're going to see a lot of resurgence to it, considering that the hero talents are not particularly great anyway. And it did receive a rework, and it makes it really great. But I feel like it's very dangerous to buff Windwalker too much to the point where it might just break the game. I suspect. It's a prediction. So we'll see if that actually ends up being the case as we go closer into the Season 1. And speaking of, you can also see what we predict the range DPS to be in our range DPS tier list right here that we've released last week. <laughs> Once again, these are all tier lists and there are predictions based off incomplete uh, beta data that just changes from week to week based with all the class tuning. So take this with a big pinch of salt, a bucket of salt, if I may.